but that the world might be saved through him. This is the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Cross. Holy. The cross does not save. Pain does not save. Blood flowing does not save. Us from our sins. It is because it is holy. Why is it, is it holy? Because it is the divine word made flesh who suffered and died for us. This is how St. Anselm of Canterbury explains it. Okay? Example. If you do something bad against your neighbor and you do the same thing, to a congressman or a senator, because of their high honor, your punishment will be higher. Now, since it is the infinite God that you hurt, nilapastangan mo yung Diyos, and God is infinite. And therefore, your transgressions are infinite. Now, you are finite. We could not pay our debt, infinite debt, to the Almighty Father. And so, it has to be a holy cross that will save us. And why is it holy? Because the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Word of God, the Son of Man, coming from the heavens, came down, dwelt among us, and we crucified Him. And in the crucifixion, we are saved. Because the blood that flowed is infinite. You could not distinguish between Jesus, the human being, and the divine Word as a divine being. They are one, completely, consubstantial unity. So the blood that flowed was holy. The saints say that even just one drop of that blood, already infinite, because it is the divine word that shed that blood when he became flesh. So our sins are forgiven. And that is why we celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. It is holy. It is redemptive because of the divine word made flesh. Also, I would like to point out, it is also revelatory. What does that mean? It means it reveals to us the kind of God that we believe in. Because, as I said, it's not the blood that saves us. It's not the cross that saves us. It's not the death and the dying that saves us. We are only saved because the blood and the cross and the, the dying was suffered by an infinite being, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. That's why when we go back to the Gospel, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That is what saves us. That reveals to us also what kind of God we believe in. There's the father giving up his only son. Since it is his only son, when the son is no longer, he is no longer father. So there was an infinite break between father and son. And the Holy Spirit tried as the love between them to keep this bond, this infinite love between father and son. That's what saved us. It is the willingness of the father to give up his only son. 
God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That is what saved us. Not the blood, not the cross, but the love of the Father and the love of the Son and the love of the Holy Spirit. That's why Christianity is fundamentally Trinitarian. If we do not believe in the Trinity, we uh, are not redeemed. Because no one will come down and save us from our sin. Save us by paying the infinite price for our infinite transgression. So it is really love that saves us. So today, we should thank the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Kaya lagi nating binabanggit dan, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you, pagkatapos sasabihin natin, through Him and with Him and in Him, laging binabanggit. Pag nagdadasal tayo, through God the Father, we ask you this, then through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The bedrock of Christian faith is faith in the Trinity. Of the Father, who so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Of the Son, infinite, second person of the Blessed Trinity, willing to take on flesh. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we crucified Him. And the Holy Spirit also, when there was that infinite break between the Father and the Son, when the Son gave His life and the Father gave His Son up to be crucified, it is the love that saves us. But that's why I said we are not masochists. We do not delight in pain. We are not sadists. We do not delight in giving pain to others. We only glorify pain because it is the pain of the divine world who became a human being like us, suffered, died, and was buried. And in the suffering, the Trinity is revealed. God the Father, who gave up His only begotten Son. The Son of Man, the Divine Word, who suffered the dying. And the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> whose infinite love keep, kept the Trinity functioning in spite of the infinite break of the dying of the Son. And so we should always glorify, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, because of the infinite love that was shown on the cross. Calvary also revealed to us the kind of God that we believe in. As we celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, we are also reminded this is the kind of God that we believe in. The God the Father, who so loved the world that He gave His only Son, the second person of the Trinity, Son of the Father, begotten before all ages, light from light, God from God, consubstantial with the Father, and the Holy Spirit, who is the love between both. Let us glorify during this Mass the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us pray for all those who are carrying their own crosses, wives, betrayed by their husbands, parents seeking to put food on the table in spite of the pandemic and the economic recession. Frontliners, doctors, nurses, everyone working in the hospital, those working in grocery stores so that we could still have something to buy so that we will not die of hunger. Let us pray for them all today. And if we have our own crosses, everyone has, let us unite that to the cross, the Son of Man, united with the suffering of the Trinity at that moment when Jesus gave up his life on the cross. And we are reminded that our God is Trinity and this love between the Trinity that's what we will share at the end of time. That is our ultimate destiny. 
And that is why today, as we exalt the cross, we proclaim with boldness that because the Trinity loves us, because the Trinity saved the world, our measure is no longer dust. Yung pagkinrimate ka. Our measure is not dust enough to fill a small urn. Our measure is the Trinity unbroken, everlasting. And we will share the life of the Trinity forever and ever if we are deemed worthy to carry His cross, to carry the cross of Jesus and follow Him so that we will be rewarded with joy that will never end. One with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Prayers of the faithful, my sisters and brothers.